Oh, you think life can get bad now? It can get much worse, but that should excite you to no end. Relationship theory, everyone. I am your host, just a healer who likes to think out loud. Here we take thoughts in, we break them down, we build them up, and we play them out. Today I want to talk about something very interesting before the new year comes in, at least as far as the Gregorian calendar, if you know what I'm talking about. But I also want to read a part in a book that I am writing. I just want to read just a piece to you and that'll come at the end. Anyway, so it can get much worse. Life can get so much worse than this. And I'm not even talking about now what's happening around the world. I'm talking about in your particular life. It can get so much worse. But that should be a good thing. We underestimate limits. We underestimate what it means to experience what we experience and we underestimate what it means to not want the kind of life that we want, what it takes to have the kind of life that we want. We underestimate both sides of the coin. Do you really know what a limit is? Or do you just know where you want to stop? I mean, let's throw it all out the window. When's the last time you've experienced something that you've enjoyed and resisted the temptation to celebrate because you knew that there was more to come? When's the last time you've dealt with something tragic, but you refuse to let it break you? Not because it can get worse, but because you just had to bear the burden and the weight of what you were dealing with to get to the other, the other end. This kind of attitude matters. The attitude you have towards your problems really matter because it's your relationship with the problem that is more important than the problem itself. You're going to have problems for the rest of your life. Good problems too. That includes good problems. So it's your relationship with problems that matters most. If you're upset that you have to deal with anything at all, you haven't grown up yet. If you're overjoyed at every single solution, you haven't grown up yet. It's more about where you want to be in the tragedy and the good times. It's not a just about the tragedy and the good times. Where do you want to be when it's happening? It's about patience. Patience describes itself when you break the word down into two. You have pace and then you have the essence of pacing. I have a post on it my Instagram page, The Relationship Theory, that says, patience requires you to learn the pacing of the problem, not the solution. We get hung up on trying to figure out the solution to a problem. We don't realize that the problem itself has a timing to it. If you've played any video game at all, or if you've watched any movie, and you see characters trying to get across, say, a bridge that has dangerous swinging objects across it, you know that the swinging objects have their own timing. You move according to their timing so, don't, so that you don't get hit. You don't just run across because you don't want to get hit. That's what it's like when you're dealing with your problems. You learn the basing of the problem itself. Not how fast you want to get across the swamp. We need to become familiar with what it really means to have a limit. We underestimate limits. 
how much can you really take? How much do you want to take? It's always going to be about what you want, not for anyone else in the world, just for you. You get to decide your limits. A lot of people decide their limits far too early in life. You haven't even experienced anything yet. You haven't seen anything that you have wanted to see. When's the last time you got to see something and you stopped it right when you personally said, no, I've had enough and was satisfied? We need to learn how to get to that point. That point is the most important. Because knowing that there is so much more around, whether it's good or bad, and saying, well, yes, but not me. I don't need much more than this right now, so I'm not going to take it on. I can, and I don't want to, so I'm not. We need to learn that. We have a lot more that, that is in our control than you realize. And then you might even realize, I don't want that much control in the first place. But then you truly embody what it means to not want that much control. Because there are a lot of people who want to let go. And then the instant they let go, they, they clamor back up like, wait, 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 I don't want to let go of that one thing. Be true with where you want your limits to be. If you want to be limitless, then be limitless. That'll be this episode. So, let's get to that book read, shall we? I just want everyone to know I have been busy not making any posts because I just wanted to focus my entire attention on this book and nothing else. Just a quick decision, hey, I'm just going to dial in on this book. It's been a long time coming, or a short time coming, who knows? Not me. <laughs> but it's called You Are You. I am working as hard as I can to get this thing finished. I already know I want an audible version, but I want to give you guys a taste of what is coming. So let me just read this to you because I think this will be something that we are going to need moving forward into the new year, into as the seasons come and go, as people change and learn things and figure things out and start to restabilize. Well, hopefully this book is going to help you restabilize. I don't want people to just go forward without reading this book. So let's jump into this. It's going to be an excerpt on chapter 12 on dreams. Interpreting dreams comes easily when you know what the things you see mean to you. Dreams submerge you in the relentless abundance of your perception and use that same perception to bring you back to shore. The more understanding you have of your own perception, the more lucid your dreams become and the more resilient you are at adapting your dreams to the life you live when you are awake. The real end goal for every human being ought to be to make your dreams come true. It is not enough to imagine that your dreams are only worth however much it costs to visit a movie at the theater. What you see in your dreams are not just movies themselves. If you had someone who gave you all the time to speak to life, everything you knew you wanted to experience, every word you utter would be the exact same as any fantastical thought that would play out in your mind as you slept. It is safe to say that dreams are the expedited version of that conversation. There will come a moment where you understand enough about yourself to embody the characteristics of your dreams, your image, and your desires. This is when you realize that what is occurring inside of you has a real place in the world. That real place may be somewhere out there, but the source is in and of you. It is based on everything you have seen. It may be broken up into parts, but you can see all the pieces which means you can embody those pieces as one image. It is because you can see all the pieces and are able to make them one that you can produce what it is that you have been dreaming of. Being able to produce that which you dream of 
as you embody the image of what you have seen in yourself is the dream itself fully realized. The process of creation is the dream. It would not be possible to dream if you were not certain of everything that made you who you knew yourself to be before that moment. Your dreams exist to develop the image of you that you were meant to be, and most of that image develops because you are the only one experiencing what you know to be true in your life. This means that there is not a single person in the world who can deny who you believe you are, because none of them know where you came from, and neither will ever be able to dream the way you can. So that's the excerpt right there. I am, right now I am writing chapter day after day after day if I can. I would write this book faster if I had any support some support i'll throw a link down there in this in the description below if you want to support me as i write the book currently i am doing uber eats deliveries so that's taking up the time that i need to write this book every time i write a new chapter i get even more and more excited so i'm just really ready to push this thing as fast and as far out as I can go. I'm gonna need to review it and edit it. I already know I want an audible version of this book. So so thank you for your support. If you go down there and you support me, I love you, thanks so much. Anyway, this is going to be the episode. It can get much worse. And that should excite you to no end. I mean, just think about it, people. You've experienced something. And the dynamic of life is always able to suggest to you that what you're experiencing is really not as bad as it seems. Not because we're not taking it serious, but it can truly get just that dramatic. That's how nuanced life is. That no matter how bad something gets, life has enough space to give you more. Always more really think about that. When does it end if it can always give you more? I'm a healer who likes to think out loud. That's the relationship theory. Enjoy your day.